back. In the last video, we looked at the gradient descent algorithm. And in, we also took a simple example last time. But let's look at another simple example. And I will show you code also for this very simple example in this case. And in the future videos, we will see how to apply gradient descent actually to inverse problems. So let's look at this uh, simple case here. Suppose we want to minimize this function. Okay, so in this one, in this case, it's kind of hard for you to know the analytical solution, though in, you can actually theoretically calculate it. But uh, the way to find out, of course, is to do a de derivative of f with respect to x1, set it to 0, del f del x2 equal to 0. This will give you the theoretical solution. But when we want to do gradient descent to find out the minimum, we start with some arbitrary guess. In this case, the arbitrary guess has been given to be 1, 1 with initial guess 1, 1. 1, 1. So let's call this x0. Um, so just to be consistent, let me call this capital X0. Okay, so capital X0 is has two sub parts 1 comma 1. Okay. Now we have the general formula as you remember xi plus 1 equal to xi minus alpha grad of f in this case with respect to x and this turns out to be del f del x1 and del f del x2. Now this is simple enough but we have to calculate this. So given the function um, f of x or f of x1 comma x2 is this function here is 8 plus x1 square by 2 plus 2 over x1 x2 plus 6 x2. You have to find out gradient of f. Gradient of f is composed of del f del x1 which of course is this function will simply give x1 and this function here will give minus 2 by x1 square x2 and this function of course will give you nothing. Similarly, del f del x2, this gives nothing, this gives nothing. The third one gives us minus 2 by x1 x2 square and this one gives us plus 6. So just as a sample calculation, um, say the initial guess, not say, but we had given an initial guess of uh, 1 comma 1. In that case, grad of f with respect to x at the initial guess is this value, which is 1 minus 2 by 1, which is minus 1. And this value is minus 2 plus 6, which is plus 4. Okay. So let's say alpha equal to 0 0.05. This will give us x new is x old, which is 1 comma 1 minus 0 0.05 into minus 1, not 4. So this is 1.05 plus comma 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0.8. So you can keep on iterating. Okay, So I just took some arbitrary value of alpha. It's possible to uh, play with more values of alpha. So I'll just write this down as a code and you can see how this performs for various values of alpha. So let's go and see the code now. So here we see our code as usual. I have kept it in a MATLAB uh, live file so that we can intersperse text with code. So if you can see the question repeated here, just to uh, remind us of what we are looking at, we, are, we want to minimize this function 8 plus x1 square by 2, etc., etc. And the way we have done it is first we specify the function and then we specify the gradient. So here you have it. 
Um, I have specified the function 8 plus x1 square by 2. Uh, this I hope everybody recognizes is a square plus 2 divided by x1, x2 plus 6 times x2. So this is the function here. The gradient was exactly the thing that we already calculated just a little bit before in the video. x1 minus 2 by x1 square x2. And uh, the second component, the semicolon here tells you that this is the first component and this is the second component. Minus 2 by x1, x2 square plus 6. So we have written the gradient here. Number of epochs simply means the number of iterations that I wish to do. So right now I have given this as 5. Okay, And I pre-specified the uh, learning rate as 0 0.05. And you here you can see these are some variables which are useful for plotting. You don't really need it. All you need is just this. Okay, In fact, I can remo remove this line entirely and everything will still work. Uh, this is just for some plotting that I'm going to do later on below. Okay, so uh, let's now start running this program. So as you can see, uh, after the initial guess, the value of W is 1 comma 1. And after one iteration, this is exactly what we had calculated theoretically. You can see this 1.05 and 0 0.8. So hopefully you can see that. But of course, it has done more iterations. So you can continue your iterations 1.1109.6488, 1 so on and so forth. And I have visualized. So you see this plot here. We started at this location 1, 1, and we started coming below. Okay, So it has started reducing significantly. And as I told you earlier, typically the idea is that the orange and the yellow portions are higher values of the function. You can see the level which shows here on your screen is 22.13. To come a little bit below, it is 21.49. And you can keep on seeing that this is reducing. So same here. At this location, 1.1, 1, 1, uh, you would be at a slightly lower point and you're going to come down. But of course, we have not reached the real minimum here, okay, which is somewhere around this point that I am demonstrating. As you can probably see, somewhere to the center of this seemingly elliptical region is our minimum level. Okay, So somewhere there is our minimum level. So all that means is we need to uh, increase the number of epochs. But before we go there, I want to show you what happens if we increase alpha. So suppose I increase alpha. You can see that the behaves, behavior starts becoming a little bit more erratic. Okay, if I increase alpha further, you see the contour is left here. It has gone to some really bad values. Okay, so it can get really, really bad if you increase alpha or if I even decrease alpha to 0.1 and let's say increase the number of iterations to 10, we can see what happens. So it's actually not staying at the minimum and it starts moving out. And this is what is known as uh, you know divergence and we need to do some hyperparameter optimization. Now I had done this beforehand. I knew that 0 0.05 would work, which is why I demonstrated it here. But there is no easy way of finding this out beforehand. We have to play with the parameters. So now I have made the number of epochs 50. And you can see it's sort of seemingly converges, but maybe it diverges just a little bit. Um, we can make alpha a little bit smaller. Still, let's say 0 0.02 and increase the number of epochs to, let's say, 500 and see if that works fine. And you can see that it is kind of converging right to the minimum. And somewhere below here at the bottom, you will see the converged value. It is, you can see now the gaps between any two subsequent values, at least the four decimal places, we have not changed. So you can see that for a large number of iterations, we are stuck here at least for four decimal places of iteration. So we can be satisfied that the minimum for this function is somewhere around 1.6438 and 0 0.4503. And you can check theoretical minimum is indeed somewhere around that. So this is a very simple example of how you can program gradient descent. Um, just as long as you have the formula for the gradient, uh, you don't need anything as complicated as the normal equations you can see. This is a simplification. Okay, So this is very, very straightforward. Now, uh, whether the function is linear or nonlinear, and in fact, you can see here, the function is nonlinear in the parameters. Remember, we are minimizing with respect to x. And even for nonlinear parameters, 
this function works just fine. So we can experiment with uh, this function with the uh, nonlinear case that I introduced to you at the beginning of this week, which was the nonlinear regression with our uh, temporal unsteady problem. And we will try and do that next and see what happens. Thank you.